What up, though, homies and homies? It's your homeboy, Grand Tizzle, and we are back for some more knowledge. Now, the last session I um, dropped y'all off with was the cycle of fifths. Now, we refresh your memory on what the cycle of fifths and cycle of fourths was, or basically the cycle wheels. A slight education on music theory. It ain't in depth, but it's enough to get you going, right? Now, here's the other thing. We have a tool. I have this tool that I like to use, and I'm going to introduce this tool to these sessions. Now, some of you are familiar with the tool, and some of you are not. Some of you guys even went and got the tool, but some still don't know how to use it. So that's what we're getting ready to uh, accomplish here. We're going to resolve that issue, and I'm going to try to help you to know how to use it. So we're going to do a few little scenarios, all right? But um, one thing I want to say, fam, is this. If you're serious about what you're doing, and you're very serious about your music, and you want to step your game up, and when I say literally overnight, I mean literally overnight, then get Harmony Navigator, fam. Get it. However you need to get it, get Harmony Navigator. Because whatever you do is going to change the way you play music literally overnight, especially after this session right here, this little small session. Now, uh, I want to say a few things before we get started. I want to say that uh, look at, first of all, consider yourself a professional, right? After these courses, you're going to be considered a professional because you're going to know inside secrets where you can accomplish a professional sound without actually being a real true bona fide professional. But th that's not the point. The point is like um, Quincy Jones can't play. But he's a professional. He's good at what he do. So the, so the whole goal, fam, is to be producers. You don't necessarily have to know how to play to be a producer, all right? So we want to we want to make sure that we understand that and embrace that, fam. Embrace it. A producer don't necessarily know have to know how to play. A producer, all producers have to know is put it together. Whether you hire a drummer. Whether you hire a drum machine beat maker, whether you hire some keyboard players, or whether you uh, emulate or simulate uh, 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 playing like a, a, a great uh, musician by playing chords and progressions. Now, the, now, to become a professional fam, you have to have tools. Every, every, every true professional have a tool. Uh, uh, cops have guns. That's their tool that they use for their job. Firemen have fire trucks and fire hose. That's what they use for their their tool. That's the tool that they use for their um, um, work. Um, you know, you have doctors and you have dentists and everybody, every profession have a tool, fam. That goes as well as producers. See, we have a tool. And whatever that tool is to accomplish the goal, then that's what we use for in our arsenal. And our tools are, of course, keyboards drum machines, and most of all, knowledge. Knowledge. And the more advanced knowledge we got, the better tool we, we are equipped with with delivering good material. Now, here's one of my secret tools, and I encourage you for it to be one of your secret tools. And don't just get it, don't just download it, and just, you know, throw it in the corner. No, actually use it. Now, I'm going to show you a very, very simple way to use this tool. Again, it's called Harmony Navigator. Now, we previously talked about the cycle of fifths and the cycle of fourths and what these, you know, numbers mean. Now, I'm not going to go over that. Again, but what I will do, if you need to be refreshed, just go back and watch the video. But what I will do is I will show you how Harmony Navigators is used um, in, in sequence with this, or I, I, for lack of better words, in sequence with this, right? What I do with Harmony Navigator, first of all, this is Harmony Navigator. I pull it up. And um, actually, it's going to, you know, it's going to probably pull up different from this. This is a preset that I already got set up. But the idea, fam, is this right here. You see, I pull up the cycle of fifths, which you can pull it up in this window. Oh, I, oh, come on. I pull up the cycle of fifths, and as you see, everything coincides with this. It matches that. And then I pull up my keyboard. You hit the window, you pull up the keyboard so we can see the chords. Now, to the left here, you see the keys boom you see you know you see that those chords see those chords you see those chords see those chords now the nice thing is that these chords are laid out in progressions 
Now, when this first opens, it opens as a, a basic, you know, it's just default. Here's the default, just some basic chords. Now, that's the basic. Now, I like to, for what I do, for what we do as hip hoppers, we like to get a little bit more, you know, um, have, a, you know, some more majors and some minors in there, some sevens and things like that. So I like to go to my preset and open up Unlimited. And that gives me, you know, more, you know, the major sevens, the major seven nines, those are the ones we use a lot, you know, the suspended, the augmented, things like that. So, so going back to this, I'm going to show you how you use Harmony Navigator to put together chord progressions. Now, one thing I didn't talk to you guys about that I left out is that chords is pretty much put together by a number system. Um, and the reason why uh, it's, the number system is used is because it's just easy. You know, it's just easy to look at, you know, okay, if, if we're in a key of C, well, um, that would be number one. And that would be number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, actually, that's not right. That's, here, let me go to C. Because actually, this is the fifth. So that's C would be the first. That would be the fifth, you know, and, and so on and so forth. But over here, look to your left, you'll see here. Here is the, uh, the, the, number, the number system right here. So C would be one. D which is the next key, would be 2, consider 2. And you see that the number system is even here, the Roman numerals. And that's our advantage when we use Harmony Navigator. I'm going to show you how to use the numbers in a second. Then, of course, 3, you know, you go to E. So you got C, D, E, F, G, and then you got the numbers to coincide with that. So you got C1, uh, D2, you know, E3, F4, G5. Now, if you look at the scale here, fam, You'll see your C, that, that's considered one. And these go up in fifths, right? Cycle of fifths, so it'll go up in fifths. So if you look at the Harmony Navigator, you'll see that this is one accordingly. And you'll see that's one. And then on the scale, you look here on the scale, you'll see that G is the fifth, right? And where is it? Right here. That's five. So here's G. So. Harmony Nav Navigator accurately assign the numbers to the chords. So it makes it easier, fam, when you're um, working with these uh, progressions or when you want to try to come up with some progressions. Now, the basic rule, fam, is you put together progressions by uh, uh, using uh, one, five, and back to one. Uh, generally, that's the, you know, the, the, the cycle. So when you're putting together chords, fam, what you can do is this is one. And here's a, here's a keys right here. That's not really important, not right now. What's important is learning how to use this. So let's say, for instance, we want to play our whole song in the, C of, in the key of C. What all, the, the basic rule is to always, when you're using your cycle, Always use your fifth or your fourth going back to your one. All right? Now, and this is just basic, fam. This is just basic information. I'm not really getting all deep into it and things like that. I'm just showing you the basic process or the basic way that I use this. And you can come up with thousands and thousands of songs just with this basic concept. Now, we get advanced in more tutorials in the future, but for right now, I don't want to cramp too much information in. For right now, this is how we use this. We want to primarily remember that the end result of whatever chord you put together is pretty much going to be from 5 to 1, right? Or, depending on if you want to cycle of force, you're going to be going from 4 to 1. All right. Now, let's use this in, in a scenario. Let's say we want to play around with some other numbers. Uh, let's say we want to go from two, two, three, and we want to jump up to six. As long as we go back to five, and then back to one. You see how this works, fam? So let's say you want to go somewhere else. You want to start off with four. 
then go down to three, then go down to two. What should you do if you want to close it? Back to one. Ah, so that's how you do it, T. That's how you do it. That's how I'm making up primarily all my songs. And uh, let's say you want to do a four to one. You know, you want to go the opposite direction. Well, you can... Four, one. And that's, you know, usually the fourths is used for a lot of like, you know, R&B and stuff like that. Now, one, one chord I like to use a lot here, I'm going to go to G here, and I'm going to add a chord. You can go over here and add chords. Uh, I'm going to add an uh, augmented, if I can find it. Where is your augmented? Maybe it's already there. Let's see. That would look good. No, I don't see it. Four I'm... Okay, there we go. G augmented. And I like to use this. Now you hear the tension in here. That really draw. Uh, it, it it sounds like it's supposed to go somewhere, and then we go back to one. Now you know, fam. I talk about this in hip hop chord progressions. So, you know, if you really want to dig really deeper, make sure you get the hip hop, you know, chord progressions, uh, volume one through five. And I get much, much more deeper. And I talk about resolution and dissonance and, and, and things like that. So make sure y'all pick that up. But for the most part, I'm just refreshing your memory and just showing you how we use this wheel. Now, say for example, right now we at C major, you know, we in C major right here. That's starting off with that. We can click any of these fifths. Look to your right. We can click any of these um, keys here, and it's going to automatically assign everything accordingly, properly. So the good news about this, fam, is you don't have to know chords. Why? Because they're showing you the chords up here. Now, again, it's going back to professionals use tools. Now, you know, you can be discreet on how you produce your music, fam. You don't have to tell people that you use a Harmony Navigator. This is insider. This is an insider tip for you. But if you want to stand out and you want to, you want, you want to be more productive, you want to produce those high quality, high value, progressive type tracks, then you can use something like this, especially if you just don't know uh, chords and progressions. See, so then this is a, a, a no, uh, what is it called? Uh, oh, that's a name for it. I can't think about it, fam. No thought, no thought process. Uh, dang, y'all know it. What, what is it? What is it? A no-brainer. There you go. This is a no-brainer. <laughs> this is a no-brainer way of putting together chord progressions, ma'am. Dang, sorry it took so long to come up with that. But anyway, um, so here, check it out. Let's say, for instance, we want to go with a D minor. We click the D minor. Boom. It automatically assigns everything accordingly. And what do we do? Again, we use the number system. What's the number system? Primarily, the five always go back to the one. Five going back to the one always complete a cycle. And that is what's going to always make your music make sense. For example, let's say we just want to use two chords. We can go one. Then we can go five. You see where I'm coming from, fam? You see how simple it is? You don't have to think about it. All you need to know is how the number system work. Now, you ask yourself, well, T, that's cool, but can you go from three to one? You can, but should you? Not really. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. The rules don't, the rules don't say you should go from three to one. Let me give you an example. I'm going to show you how awkward it's going to sound. Now again, it works, but it didn't do nothing for you. It didn't. It didn't quench your thirst. It didn't. Uh, when you go into three, it's, it don't give you that completeness. You know, it almost kind of sounds like well, when you go from one and you go to three, you can go other places. You see what I'm saying? You see how we can? Now that sounds right, right? Now can you go from two to one? Well, yeah, you can go one. can 
can do that. But doesn't sound more pleasing like that or like this. You see how we we move around the, the board, fam, and then we go to five to take it back to one. Or you can go to four and take it back to one if you're doing the cycle of fours. You see that? Now, you can also go to um, seven. Now, right in this case, because of the key that we're in, we um at a sharp seven, right? But check it out. We can do that. There we can go. You see what I'm saying? So long as you understand, fam, how this wheel work, that's how the wheel work. Now, how can we use it in real life scenario? Well, let's pull up a song, let's pull up a track, and let's 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 lay something down real quick so that you can get a full understanding of what's happening. And I'm gonna show you how we could put together a track in, you know what I'm saying, less than just a few seconds by using that concept and using the cycle wheel, right? Uh here, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's pull up something I already got. I already got some drum pattern in it. Fried turkey. All right. And let's just delete everything in here. And uh, let me play this rhythm. All right, now let's let's just use that, just for the sake of this session, fam. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this. Now again, again, fam. You know, I'm not gonna front and act like you know I'm the best player in the world. If you watch the tutorials, I mean, the whole world ain't gonna know that I'm not a, a, a you know a, a accurate super duper player like that, right? I don't play like that. I mean, I can, I can, I can fake you. I can. But you see, you hear me fumbling. I know some chords. Right? But when it comes to progressions, my brain don't work as fast. I'm still learning them. But guess what? This helps me. So don't be shamed. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. This is the tool that you use to put it down. Does it matter how it goes down? No. What matters is the end result and the sale. And you can feed your family off of music that you created all from your mind and all from your heart. Now, we're going to use a simple. Now, let me show you something cool about this fam. We're going to pull up the layout and I'm going to pull up the progression editor. And we're going to use the simple one, five, one. So we play this. Let's put that up there. And you see the chords? This is the chord that it plays, right? And what you do, you simply look at the chords and you play it on your keyboard. And I'm playing it at a regular octave, right? So what's going to be the fifth? We're going to simply go here. And we see the chord there. You see how easy it is, fam? And that's a whole song. So if you're a hip-hop producer and you got a really, really, really nice rhythm, all you need to, uh, once you understand how the chord progressions work, once you understand the cycle of fifths, and once you understand the number system, and you go get your harmony navigator, you can put together simple things like this. Now let's do it. Let's be real simple. I'll put this click on. Uh, mm, uh. And... and what's that other chord? Because I forgot I got a low memory span, right? But that's okay. Right there, that's the chord. And where's the keys? Right here. And what I can do, let me see. And since I'm playing the keys, I can also go up a few octaves so I can say. And maybe a little higher. Let's see, what are the notes? Well, that's too high.
So let it, let's play that. All right, so let's look at this. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this to the side. You see this right here. So watch this. This is the note. Da, 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 da. So I'm playing it over here. Da, da, uh, uh. And a lot of times I like to add maybe a note, another note or two. So you see I'm adding the same thing that I added here. I'm adding up there. So we say, right? Now, let's take it back to the top. Boom, boom, push play. Oops, am I, am I at the right spot? Okay. And then that other chord. And then we loop it. So let me put that back. Let me put it back. Move, back. move too much. Move too fast. All right, let me make sure that that's the key. That's the key. Oh, here we go. Oh, right there. I played that. Right there. So that's the tension. That's the descendant chord that's going back to the consonant chord. Now, if you don't know what descendant chord and consonant chord mean, the descendant is always the chord that's going to pull. It's pulling. It's pulling where it, it wants to pull back to completion. So it's pulling back to one. And that's how you use it, fam. It's very simple. Very simple. Don't try to get too technical. Don't try to get too complicated yet. Wait till you get familiar with it. Get familiar with using it this way. Use it a couple hundred. Make a couple hundred tracks. And I'm talking, when I say a couple hundred tracks, I mean it. Take the same beat. Take a beat. Make a really nice beat. A beat that you're really feeling. And, and, and do you a few different progressions with it until you get familiar with it. So we're going to keep this simple here. We're going to play it again. And then we go. There we go. It's a whole song, fam. It's a whole song. Now watch this. Now here's the irony of this, fam. Check this out. We're going to go to a bass. Oh, no, 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 no. Here. What, what, what can we do? What can we do? This is real simple, right? This is simple. Let's pull this keyboard up. This is going to be the same um, chords, right? Same chords. And what we can do, we can we can get some strings. Oh, sorry, I ain't on there. Am I on there? Where are you? Oh, that's okay. I was gonna play some strings. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if we could do this. I'm trying to keep this real short. We got some sessions to do. Um, that there. Okay, so we could say, I mean, actually, this. And what's that other note, fam? Right there. So, let's see if that, let's see what happens right there. Okay, I'm gonna record it this time. I'm gonna record it this side, fam. the other chord right there okay real simple right now check it out now let me show you something fam again we go back to this here pull up our thing and when we play these chords yeah watch this we play the D minor 9 that's the root baby that's the root. They telling you where the bass is. So you don't have to guess. Don't guess it. If you want, you can. You can use that, right? Because any bass note you play that's in that scale is going to work. And then that's the other bass. 
Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Very simple, very simple. Watch this. I don't have to play anything but what they told me on the scale, which is that, 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 and then that, then that. So watch this. And then the others. So you see how that worked, fam? Now you wonder, well, okay, T, that's sweet, man, but how do you move it around, man? Because cause your stuff be sounding sweet. Not really. It's not really that. What it really is is once you know what that bass is, fam, you be like, And you know that the other note is this, right? You watching it? You know the other note is that. Dun, dun. So you so you play with it. You be like. Then you can do stuff like. Or. or you just playing with it that's really what you're doing it's almost kind of like you're soloing so we go back and now watch me when I add a little flavor to it let me turn it up so you guys can actually hear what the pop off is okay so we turn it up and check it out i'm just gonna record it right now and let me pull this up so y'all can actually see it okay now check it out You see that fam? Real simple, real simple. Now keep in mind fam, this is only a two part chord. It's only a one and a five going back to a one, but listen how productive it sounds. And watch this, what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and add some other elements. We're gonna add some other elements and we're gonna keep it within the key of that um we're gonna keep it in the key now what we're gonna do is keep it in the key so let's pull this back up and let's put our keyboard back up and this is the key this is the chord so we can do anything in here we can Or we can just play one note, right? And check it out. Any note that's within this scale here, I like to go in within the the notes. You, of course, you can go. Excuse me. You can go out of the scale, but I like to stay right in the scale. Sometimes you go out of it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, for beginners, stay in the scale. Don't go out. You can't screw up if you stay within the scale. Now you see this one note here. We'll take this note. Let's see if this note is also in here. No, it's not. But this note is. And so that means that if I play this continuously throughout the track, it's going to is not going to clash or crash. Now that's good for when you want to play like a maybe a guitar note or you know some type of monotonous sound or whatever you know some type of rhythmic sound but I'm just going to use this now you see how that works fam now you know I probably wouldn't do it I probably would move around You know what I'm saying? You know, or probably even this. I'll probably do that. Let's see.
<laughs> yeah, let's just do that. I stuck to that. We'll stick to that. Let's lay that down real quick. There we go, right there. Now, I'm going I'm to wrap this up, fam, but I just want to make sure that you guys understand how this wheel is used. Because this wheel, this Harmony Navigator, this system here, this is my hidden secret tool. That's the primary tool that we're going to be using to make those epic tracks, to make those big beats. I always come here, I, without, without fail, I use Harmony Navigator to put together all my progressions. Now, advanced uh, sessions... Uh, what what we can do and you know, I'm not going to get that deep off into it, you know, but um, you know We can say for instance, we can go to a B minor and we can and Then you can actually change it, you know what I mean? And then go back But that, that, that gets advanced, and you know what I'm saying, that's taking you to another level, and I don't want to get there yet. I want to, I want to use a very simple, a simple anatomy, a very simple process, a simple tool that we use, put together some simple progressions. Um, I'm usually standing the D minors, the B flats, the A minors, the B minors. Those are pretty much more of the groovy type of, you know what I'm saying, vibe. We can pick any minor, and you'll notice it just sound good. Go to a G minor. We can go to E flat. You hear it got, it got that dark tone, you know what I'm saying? So it got that kind of got that groovy feel good vibe. But anyway, fam, that's how you use it. So again, how do we use it? We 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 how do we put together progressions? By the number system. The one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sharp, seven, seven sharp, right? And we can play any numbers as long as we winding it back, taking it back home from going to a five to one. So again, I'm gonna give you one more scenario before we wrap this up. Let's say we start off at six, four, three, We can go somewhere else. We can start two, two, three, four, five, one, or six, five, four, five, one, or we could say two. See how that works, fam? Or seven, eight, uh -huh. You see how I work? That's how I work. Just that simple, not complicated. Don't overthink it. Don't overthunk it. Just do it, and you can make good, good music. If you don't got it, I highly encourage you, invest. It's a it's a guaranteed investment. It would not that would be the best investment that you made since since uh, investing in music. Period. I promise you, it's it's going to be the best investment you've made. And I think that I'm going to be the reason. I, I sound real haughty right now. You know what I'm saying? But I think I'm gonna be the reason why everybody on YouTube music is going to be sounding like they. The Quincy Jones or something like that because if you go get Harmony, Harmony Navigator and you use this system and you understand the cycle of fifths and the way the fifths and the fourths work and you go over here putting together progressions secretly and dropping out them hits it's going to change the game people going to have to step their game up especially if they don't know what the heck you're using it's your homie Grant Tizzle I hope y'all know how to use it because we're definitely going to be using it for, these, for these, the next rest of these sessions I'm signing out now we're going to move on to another chapter, another tutorial, and I'm going to show you some 
special techniques, some special tips, some stacking tips, because you're going to have to know how to do that in order to make your production sound big. Until then, I'll see you when I'm, I'll see you in a minute. I'll see you when I spin it.